you know a stepmom? Are you a stepmom? Have you had a stepmom? Stepmoms. This is a special, special kind of woman. And, you know, we think that it's the wicked stepmom that we see in the movies or like the mother-in-law jokes. There doesn't seem to be a lot of positive talk about it. And it's sad because with more than 50% of the marriages ending in divorce, many, 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 almost all of them, percentage-wise, go on to marry again. And when there's children involved, there is a complicated dynamic. And I feel like this mom, this special mom, this woman named stepmom is underrated. She's underappreciated. And you know what? She's ill-equipped. <laughs> I bet you can say that if you have, if you are a stepmom or you've been mothered by a stepmom. And the reason is, is because nobody kind of wants to talk about it, but we're going to talk about it today. And we're going to talk about some of the really, really important, important uh, issues that uh, evolve around having, a, having stepkids and being a stepmom. And we're going to do that today with a very special guest, and I can't wait for you to meet her. So let's get to it. Welcome to the Moms Like Us podcast, where moms just like you learn strategies, systems, and skills through expert interviews and real life insight designed to take your marriage, mothering, and home to the expert level. Hi, I'm Mona Corwin, your mom mentor and host, author, international speaker, and the founder of the Moms Like Us Academy. I've been coaching moms for over 25 years, and I have some really good news for you. Motherhood isn't a natural talent. It's a skill and you can learn it. You can crush it at motherhood instead of motherhood crushing you. So let's get to today's show. Okay, my special guest today is Laura Petheridge. She serves couples and singles, adults with topics on women's issues, relationships, step families, co parenting single parenting, divorce prevention, and divorce recovery. Little Miss Laura has cornered the market on this issue. She is an expert in this issue. She's written five books. One is called, the, one of them that is very well known is The Smart Stepmom. And the other one is 101, oh, let me think, 101 Tips for the Smart stepmom, because you need some tips, but you're going to need some expert advice, and we're going to have it today. Laura has spoken all over. She's been on the Billy Graham Training Center, Lifeway, Mom Life. Today, she's been on um, uh, Dr. Dobson's Focus on the Family. She's been with Dennis Rainey, Moody Publishing. She has been just about everywhere, and she writes for magazines also, and she's published in um, Today's Christian Woman, Christianity Today, Marriage Partnership, Crosswalk, you name it, she's been in it. And she is has as a feature guest on Divorce Care, the DVD series, which I think is really, really an important um, topic. I know a lot of you have have probably are familiar with that. She's that this um, equips 16,000 churches worldwide. So Laura knows what she's talking about. Not only that, but there's some good news about being a stepmom when we're talking to Laura. Laura's been married for 36 years, and she lives in Atlanta with her husband, Steve. She has two married stepsons and two grandchildren. Laura is got this down as much as you can, and she's here today, and she's come back from the trenches, and she's going to help us today learn all about what it is to be a smart stepmom. I'm going to bring Laura up. There you are. Hi, Laura. How are you? Hello. Good morning. Oh, good morning. Good morning. Good okay. to see you. I'm going to, we got to pause. We're going to pause. I'll clip this out. You got, all of a sudden got really low on your, on your picture. I'm seeing your um, bookshelf more than you. More, 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 more. Yes. No, down. 
Go back. Go back a little bit. Perfect. Ta-da. Sorry. Look at, no, no. It's perfect. Perfect. It, it happens. And um, that's why I quit doing these live. And I now do them. I now do them. And we just, we just clip it because I have a really good editing team. Great. <laughs> okay. All right. We're going to start it over. Laura, I am so glad that you're here. I, when I met you the very first time, we could not stop talking about this topic because as a mom mentor, I see it a lot and I really don't have a lot to, to offer them. So I was so grateful to be able to get your wisdom and to find out that, you know, what are all of the pieces to this? So tell yeah. me, when you were writing your book for stepmoms, why why is there even a need for this specific area other than well, it's hard <laughs> yeah the reality is is that you think becoming a stepmom is going to be one thing and then when you get into it it actually looks very different than when you thought it was going to be and that was even for somebody like me who was raised with two stepmoms i have two stepmothers in my life myself so I just thought. Okay, you muted yourself. Laura, I lost you. There you are. <laughs> I got a spam call and it kicked, but I've got, I'm on airplane mode. So why would it? Well, got a spam well, call. Mr. <laughs> Mr. Devil doesn't want us to, he's, he's spamming you because this topic is too, too important. Really, yep. really. Okay. We're going to, we're going to start with me welcoming you again. Well, Laura, I'm so excited to finally have you on the podcast. When we met in Florida a little while ago, I was so excited to talk. To, you and I sat across the table and we were talking loud over all the women and there were a bunch of us chatting and I just couldn't get enough of the information and the wisdom that you had on st being a stepmom. Um, tell me a little bit about why um, this is an important book, the book, The, the Smart Stepmom, which you wrote, why this is such an important topic that it, it needs its own couple books. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Well, most people are not aware that being a stepmom is going to be radically different than being a biological mother. So, you know, I had two stepmoms myself growing up, you know, my dad remarried two more times. So you would think if somebody was going to be prepared to be a stepmom, it would be me because I lived it as a kid. But I was so ambushed, so shocked by the complexities of being a stepmom that it really took me by surprise. And if I'm being 100% honest, it, it was discouraging. It, it made me sad. It made me like, oh my gosh, this is way more complicated than I thought it was going to be. And I'm totally not prepared for it. So I had such a heart for other stepmoms that would be living that. Um, that's sort of why this whole thing manifested and started taking off as the smart stepmom. Well, I, I, you know, as the, as moms have come to me and, and asked me questions and I, I'm without answers. So I'm so grateful to have all your wisdom and, and have the, a very good place to, to direct them. Um, what are, let, let's just go straight. Um, let's go straight to the, the mom, the stepmom relating to the kids. And then I'd like to move to the father in the, in the mix and then move on to um, the biological mom. And so let's talk about a relationship with a stepmom to the stepchildren when you're coming in i guess it makes a difference how old they are and like what are good ways to bond yes well the first thing the stepmom needs to understand and many people the step family uh, actually not just the mom but the whole step family the two adults um and a lot of people don't like hearing this so i'm going to give that with a little uh 
caveat before it that don't be turned off immediately by this statement. But all step families are birthed on loss. There had to have been a divorce or a death or a uncoupling in the past for the step family to even exist. Wow. Now, people don't like hearing that because they don't want to think back. They don't want to, they, they want to believe everybody survived, everybody's happy, everybody healed from that, every, you know, that nobody's walking around sad or grieving. So nobody likes to talk about that because it sounds negative. But you see, if a stepmom does not embrace that truth, it will be much harder for her. Because if she can recognize, oh, this isn't really about me. They're not rejecting me. They're rejecting the loss that they have experienced. The, the, the biological family is no more. And so they're taking it out on me or they're unhappy with me or they're not embracing me, not because they don't like Laura, but because they don't like the scenario they are in. They that don't is, that's like huge. The that's like, that's like, that is... <sighs> Like, yes, it is based on loss. Yes. And they're feeling the loss. That's right. And every time they're in their presence, they have to feel the loss again. Exactly. It's like going to a funeral every weekend that I go visit my father. Oh, oh, that's so sad. But yeah. Uh, and, and, and again, people aren't going to like that. Stepmoms are not going to like that. Right now, their stepmoms going, I don't like that. I don't believe that. I don't, you know, and that's okay. I get that it's hard to hear. However, if you want to become a smart stepmom, you will embrace that truth. Yeah. Because it will help you not to take the rejection or the behaviors that may come so personally. You won't take it as these kids are little brats and look at how they're treating me or look at how they're behaving. Mm. You can, now I'm not making an excuse for yeah. behavior that is bad. That's yeah. not what I'm doing. I'm saying we've got to go deeper, go down into the why they are not embracing you as a stepmom. And so if you can, can get it in your head it's not me they reject. It's that they miss their biological family. Yeah. And I am just a byproduct of that. And we can learn to overcome this together. This is, this is really, um, I love this. When we see that the, the stepmom has found her Prince Charming. She's in love. She's so excited. She's going to have a new life. It's going to be wonderful. She is looking at her life going forward as wonderful. I'm excited. Like, this is the future. This is awesome. This is birthed out of love. I can't wait to be married to this man. But she, is, she has to have a relationship with those children based on loss. And being able to navigate between those two things, I'm sure is extremely helpful. It's yeah. that, you know, your marriage and your desiring to move forward, that's not how these little ones are feeling. And so going in and dipping in to their, their loss, even though you're moving forward. And, and I mean, let's face it, you're the adult. You can do that. You can go back and forth. I love that. Yeah, and it's not just little kids. It's adult kids, too. Yes. You'd be amazed at how much adult kids grieve when their parent remarries. It's it's very shocking, and it's often shocking to the, to the child. They thought maybe they were over mom's death, or they were over their parents' divorce, or whatever. And this kind of re-triggers um, that this woman is now replacing my mother or, you know, and again, th this is how to know the difference between a good stepmom and a stepmom that's being destructive. She recognizes, don't try to replace the mom. Even if the mom is gone, even if the mom has taken off, you know, has moved away, or if mom is dead, you want to be move very slowly into that role of being the female role in the home. You are dad's wife until the child chooses 
to let you be stepmom. So the person who is in control of how close a stepmom and a stepchild will be, and this is at any age, is the child. The child decides, will I open my arms, my heart, my mind to my father having a new wife? And a lot of that depends on, like you said, their age, their relationship with their biological mother, how often they see their dad, how often the uh, stepmom is in their life, if the stepmom is being um, embracing and giving them time for all the changes. There are numerous factors that go into whether a child will embrace a stepmom or not. But you can still become a smart stepmom even if the children never fully embrace you as a part of the family. And that's the hard part. Yeah. So do, do the kids, I mean, they need counseling, right? Yes. Usually nine times out of 10, I very rarely see any that don't. Um, and again, this goes back to a grief, a loss. See, we in our society have trained ourselves to believe that when we move in with someone and then we have a baby and then we move out, doesn't even have to be a marriage. When we've coupled with someone and we've created a baby, we've had a baby together, and now we move on to another relationship, and whether that be a marriage or another live together relationship, we think the kids are adjusting to that. Oh, it's no big deal. They didn't get that attached anyway. And that's because children don't have developed brains. I was just they say that. can't communicate how they really think or feel. So it come, guess how it comes out? It comes out by being a little brat by being snotty, by saying mean things, by figuring out what they can do to hurt you, by hiding in their bedroom if they're a teenager. And so all of that is just them expressing how they are not happy with what's going on. And it's really hard to be the stepmom in that scenario because you've got to love sacrificially. This is, you may not get anything in return for a long time. I often say that becoming a stepmom taught me more about how to love like Jesus than any other experience in my life. Wow. Be because I had to keep doing it without getting anything in return for a long time. And it, it requires a lot of prayer, a lot of patience, a lot of wanting to love your husband, to love God, to love the kids, even when you aren't getting anything good back in return. So your your biggest advice to the relationship between the mom, the stepmom, and the stepkids is, remember, it's based on a loss. Yes, and let them navigate the closeness. Let them come to you. Don't force the relationship. Now, here's where dad enters the picture. Dad Let's go often, to dad. <laughs> hello. Dad very often wants them to become like a normal family. He's pushing stepmom to be their new mom. He may not say it in those words, but he wants her, go do all the things for my kid. Go take them to do this. Go to the soccer game. Go do this. Go do this. Go do this. And he gets upset with his wife and accuses her of not loving his kids mm. if she's not engaged, totally engaged. But you see, that can push the kid further away. And what they've got to do is let it happen organically. Uh, an easy way to explain it is become more like an aunt or like a grandma or like the nice lady from church that your families all get together. And so you're embracing that child. You're invited. Hey, want to come bake cookies with me? Oh, no, you don't want to? That's okay. You know, hey, I'm going to the mall. Do you want to go with me? No, you don't want to ride with me? That's okay. Hey, Johnny, do you want me to come to your soccer game? Because I'm willing to come if you want me to. But if you're afraid that's going to cause some tension, or if you're afraid your mom's going to be upset because I'm there, I'm more than willing to stay home. I'd, I'd like to be there. I want to see you play soccer. 
I care about your soccer game, but I want to do what's best for you. Now on the side, you've got dad yelling, no, I want you there. You're coming to the soccer game because I want you there with me. But you see, that's not doing what's best for the child. If that child sees my stepmom cares whether she is putting me in a confrontational situation, she cares about me more than she cares about being there. Whoa. Now that child may never say that because they're a kid. They may never say, thank you, stepmom, for putting my needs and my priorities first. But they're thinking it. And as they get older, they'll remember. My stepmom cared about whether that put me in an awkward situation. That is brilliant. <laughs> brilliant. So what what happens when they're like super rude and they're disobedient and unkind, you know, little ones will slap you. So, I mean, fortunately, big ones probably won't. But I mean, what happens then? Dad's not around and that's that kind of stuff's going on. That's the hardest part. That's what you just asked is the hardest part. And the most common, uh, the most common statement I hear is this is harder than I thought. Yeah. The second most common statement is how can I get my husband to step up and parent his children? Yeah. He's parenting out of guilt. He's parenting out of fear. He's parenting, but he's afraid to set any boundaries or discipline with his kids because he's afraid they're going to choose not to come visit anymore. And you have two chapters in your book about dads. And yes. I would think, I mean, <laughs> it's it's funny because for some reason I seem to, um, I, I, I'm like, oh, I get how the dad must feel. Because he, again, wants to move forward in this wonderful thing. He really wants a happy family. He has yes. a new wife and he's madly in love and he wants to, he wants everything to be good. And he wants his kids to be happy. And he wants his wife to have, be happy. No, men don't like to fight with women, even though, um, you know, it, people say that they do. They don't. They don't want to. It goes against the way God created them. Men are supposed to lead, feed, protect, and provide and, you know, beat up the bullies that are trying to get at his, his girl and his kids. And when his, ki when his girl becomes the person he has to fight with, he doesn't know what to do. <laughs> It's like, what, what is this? She's not like, I can't stab her. I can't, you know, kick her out. Uh, yeah, this is, this is why when dad, this is why when dad remarries, it gets worse with the ex-wife. Yeah, we're going to get to her. with the biological mom. We're going to get to her because she needs help too. So yes. tell me, tell me about, um, because they're, they're, you could be, have both. You could, I mean, both of you get you get married, and on yeah. one hand you're the stepmom, and on the other hand, you're the the uh, biological mom, and so it. Uh oh, I lost you. I don't know why. I got to tell you, Jill Savage and I had to re-record our interview four times. She has never had that happen before. You you have a powerful a powerful platform, my love. Yep. Really See, are. this prevents divorce. What okay. you and I are doing right now prevents another re-divorce, and yeah. that's why I do what I do. Is to if you can get to the stepmom and get her to hear this she won't file for a divorce. Yeah. Yeah. We're going to get, that's going to be our end. Let's make that our ending. Okay. Um, all right, let's go. So when dad needs to step in, what, what happens then? Well, the problem is, is that stepmom thinks he should be stricter <laughs> than he wants to be. Mm. And often she wants him to be stricter than he's been over the past year or two 
when he's been a single parent dad dealing with his ex-wife or ex-girlfriend and they've gotten a system worked out which is usually a little bit lenient but it's okay with him because men see things differently you know when i met my husband the kid the boys were like okay we eat pizza and pepsi and we play video games well who is this woman that's come in and wants us to sit down and eat turkey and mashed potatoes and sit at the table and like who is she why is she here and everything has changed because I'm a woman bringing like a home nest into the scenario. Well, the kids, they're not, they're not used to that. They, when they were at dad's, it was relax and watch video games. And so this is where an instant dislike for the stepmom can come, first of all. Second of all, dad's now stuck. If he does what his wife, his new wife wants to do, which is make things more of a nest and more rules and more chores and more discipline, his kids are mad at him and his ex-wife to some degree. If he does what his kids want and, and keep things the same as they've been, his wife is furious and she's saying to him, you don't love me. You're choosing your children over me. You're choosing to please your ex-wife over what I'm asking you to do. Whoa, that is a, an explosion. This poor guy, he doesn't know what hit him. He had no idea what he was getting into. He had no idea it was going to be this complicated. And he loves both sides, but he cannot make both of them happy. Yeah. And so the key is to really discuss this, preferably way before you move in together, get married, way before you become the Brady Bunch. Discuss what is going to be a hill to die on mm -hmm. in this house. And so some of the things you brought up, you mentioned, like speaking disrespectfully, I mean, I, in the 25 years I've been doing this, this issue has gotten increasingly worse because you're dealing with this in biological families just as well as you are in a step family. Whatever you see happening negatively in the biological family, exacerbate that times 10 and it's happening in the step family. So now you have a child, an adolescent or a teenager who's getting a mouth and mom and dad are having a hard time getting to control that mouth or that attitude or the rolling of the eyes or whatever. Now you put that child in front of a stepmom or a stepdad who is not their parent. Who do you think you are telling me to do chores? Who do you think you are? And you see, if dad doesn't back that up, stepmom feels like, what am I? I'm a maid. I'm a chauffeur and a maid. I am nothing more. I can't stand these kids. I can't stand it here. I feel used and abused. And you, my husband, are not standing up for me. And, that's, and, and, and that he is supposed to. Yes. But how he's supposed to do that is different. Here's where I'm going to get some rub from the church folks. Is different than in a biological family. Tell me. Be because, <laughs> answer me this, who was there first, the children or the new wife? Children. The children. And see, the children have been in the front seat. Probably for a long time, because it, then leading up to a messy ending is a messy end. Right. And then we have time in between where you didn't know them. So these kids have have been suffering, like you said, and probably everybody doesn't want them to be mad and only wants them to feel better. So we let them have what they want to eat. We don't press. We don't require things that are because they're hurting enough. That's kind of the mentality. Exactly. So guess who gets blamed? when dad starts to discipline. Oh, the person that they, they don't love. Well, and the person that changed it. Oh, yeah. 
you. See, they're not stupid. <laughs> they figured it out. Before she came, we didn't have to do all this stuff. And so, although it's yeah. easy to say that dad should be standing up for her, that here's stepmom's job, and it's going to be the hardest thing she's going to be requested to do. Let dad be the parent. Stop parenting more than the parent. Okay. Now I have a question because all the stepmoms that are listening to this are like, how am I supposed to do that when he's gone all day? Do, do you have a plan? Is there, are there that 101, <laughs> that 101 good steps that we need tips? We need to get that. Tell me a little bit about that. What do you do when he's gone? Well, dad has to say to the kids, while I'm gone, these are the rules. While I'm gone, stepmom Susie is in charge. Um, she is not going to reprimand you because she is not your mother. I am your father. You're to obey me. But she is going to tell me if you did not do what I told you to do. And this will be the consequence. Mm -hmm. So if you don't do your homework, let's say that. We'll use that as an easy one. If you don't do the homework you're supposed to have done today, and stepmom Susie has looked in on your homework and reminded you, Joshua, just a reminder, your dad said that homework had to be done by 5 o'clock. Oh, good. 5 o'clock comes. She doesn't say it again. She doesn't lean over Joshua and nag him and comment and you're going to end up, you know, in the poor house if you don't start doing your homework. You've already been called to the principal's office three times. She does none of that. She tells dad when he comes home at five o'clock, oh, by the way, I checked on Joshua's homework. He did not do it. I'm, you know, that was my role. So it's yeah. a role, so it is a role, so laying out the authority and being really clear up front that this is not your mother, she does have authority, but my authority is what we're going with. And if he lays everything out, you just have to keep readjusting as things come along. And then eventually, I imagine you hit everything. But if you had, I mean... A babysitter or uh, someone that was taking care of them throughout the day, it would kind of be the same thing. It's exactly the same. And you you don't want it to be that because you want to be, you want to be what you know they need. Exactly. There's the problem. There's the rub. You but eventually, but eventually, can it get to a place where? I, I just think that probably not. Like dad always needs to be the authority. The, the, I mean, that's the way it was in our family. I mean, our family, we, I've been married 40, like I, he's the only one, my only husband. But in the end, no matter what I said, in the end, if you have done what you're not supposed to do, I am telling your dad. Exactly. I mean, kind of like wait till your father gets home kind of thing. Exactly. In many ways it is. But you hit the nail on the head. A stepmom starts out more like a babysitter. They Which hate is that horrible. Point. Oh, I hate they the sound hate of that. that. It's horrible. Think of a new name. Oh. Yes. And then they gradually over. Can we call it caretaker? Well, we do move it up. In the in the we book, do. in the smart stepmom, we move it up. Her oh. level of authority increases. Okay. If, big word, capital I-F, if dad backs her up. Oh. See, it can't go forward if dad does not back her up. So if dad comes home at five o'clock and Joshua has not done his homework, and the consequence that dad said, if you do not do your homework, you cannot play video games tonight. If dad lets him play video games when he did not do his homework, 
she has lost any little authority that he gave her. Oh, wow. And that was very little. Yes. So this isn't, that is not necessarily only for stepmoms. That's true. Because consequences don't seem to be happening in our culture anyways. That's right. So all the more reason why dad needs to um, lay everything out. Absolutely. Now, stepmom is going to want dad to have firmer boundaries than he wants to have. Probably. So, you know, she wants his iPhone gone for a week if if he didn't do the homework. Where dad's just going to take away a couple of hours of video games. This is where step parent has to step back and stop trying to parent more than the parent. Even so, if you, it, so it, it, you're saying, it, let me get this straight. Um, so the stepmom needs to step back and allow the parent to parent with the agreement that they've had. Obviously, they've met, they've decided what these things are. I'm sure that's all part of your book and everything. But then she can't go around and try to parent through him to get him to do what she was still wants, which a woman can do. Absolutely. But it's not going to be good for you or your man or, or the stepkids. Even if you think your husband is making a huge mistake, you've got to let that go. These are his children. He and the mom are responsible to God for how these kids are parented. Yeah. Stop trying to overparent the parents. That's that's huge. That's it's huge. the number one thing that moms tell me about stepmoms. I wish his new wife would stop trying to parent my children more than I am parenting and their dad is parenting. So how do we get dad on the right page? <laughs> well, that's going to be really, really big question because, you know, dad doesn't see what he's doing is wrong. Of Dad's course. thinking you don't love my child as much as I do. So here's the difference, Mona, between you and your husband that you just mentioned Let's say one of your children does something wrong and you're saying, wait till your dad comes home. So when dad comes home and you say what the child did wrong, has your husband ever said to you, you don't really love our son? Oh my gosh, no. See, you never say that in a biological couple. No. But a step parent hears that all the time. Oh. So when dad comes home and Joshua doesn't have his homework done, and she tells dad, Joshua didn't do his homework today. And dad starts making 10 excuses. Well, he was tired. He slept late. You know, maybe I was too harsh on him. And she says, this is the boundary you set. You're not following through. He turns to her and says, or he thinks and says it in a different way. You don't love Joshua as much as I do because the, he's not your real child. Mm -hmm. Now we have to talk about how much this all hurts the stepmom because she's trying. It's hard. Do you see how hard it is? Yes. Do you see yes. how unnatural it is? Yes. See, it's unnatural because I love my stepmom. But it's really common. Yes. All the yeah. more reason why we need people like you to um, help stepmoms navigate because they yeah. they're ground zero because they they're not part of that that bonding that was already in place and ripped apart and then there's this uckiness and the sorrow and the they're looking everybody is looking for someone to blame or to vent on. And the stepmom is the one that's getting it. The target is on her back. And that, I mean, that's across the board, right? Yes. And this is why so many second marriages fail. 73%. Mm -hmm. Whoa. 
You really? Oh. If you include people who cohabitate, now you won't see that in divorce statistics because the census doesn't keep those anymore. They stopped in 2010. Oh, how convenient. So, yeah. So you can't really get, you know, on the internet, a firm statistic. But I will tell you that three out of four yeah. remarriages or recoupling is what they call it now, fail. And children are the number one reason why parenting children and that includes adult stepchildren where the adult stepkids don't like it that maybe stepmom's gonna inherit some money or mm -hmm. stepmom influencing dad to do something move or something you know that's a whole nother show but um yes so a stepmom has to be prepared. And so often people say to me, Lori, you're so negative. You're so negative about stepmoms. I'm not being negative. I'm trying to help this woman who either is entering the situation or is already in the situation and she doesn't know what to do. She doesn't know how to find peace without losing herself, without you know, I have so many stepmoms that say to me, Laura, I look in the mirror and I think, where did Laura go? Where did I go? I have become this miserable, nagging, ugly, complaining woman that is nothing like I used to be. And not what you wanted to be. No. And his kids are the reason why. Now, you know, you and I know there's more to it than that. Right. But... It feels like if his kids were just gone, because when they're not here, we get along fine. If his kids just didn't come to visit. Now she doesn't say that out loud because she knows that makes her the wicked stepmother. But she grows to have disdain for these kids. She loves them, but she's tired of it. And she doesn't know what to do. Yeah. And that's why it sounds negative. Yeah. But to, to help all of this diffuse to where she doesn't get to that place, are, what, is, what is one of your best piece of advice for her? She's got to redefine her role. She's got to read, she's got to get rid of, burn the Brady Bunch idea. Yeah, that wasn't helpful. Yeah. And redefine, either attend a stepmom conference or attend a stepfamily event that's giving good advice. There's some out there that's giving bad advice. It's a good idea if she can bring her husband so that he can learn too, that the whole idea that they had in their head of what this was going to be was erroneous. It doesn't mean it's negative. It doesn't mean it's bad. It doesn't mean, you know, that it's all going to be ugly. And But you've got to let the dream die of what you thought this was going to be and redefine who you are, who your family is, what this is all going to look like, who everybody's going to like and dislike, how we're going to react, who's going to parent. We've got to redefine all of that. And we didn't know we were going to have to. But if we will do it, the marriage and the relationship and the family can survive and thrive and everybody can calm down. We need to lower the expectation of what this was going to be. And everybody has to, has to play a different role than they thought. Yeah. And that is the key. It looks to me, am I wrong, that dad really needs to be the rudder for this because it's his new, beautiful, can't believe I married someone as wonderful as you, wife, and his kids who he feels so much guilt that he's made them so sad and he just knows that it'll be okay. But he's the one, he's got to be the rudder. And let me tell you what some dads do. This is why you see so many statistics about dads 
not seeing their children or, you know, there's less and less of that than there used to be, but you still have a much higher percentage of dads getting remarried and dropping their family, their former family. Um, and I'm not, I'm not throwing men under the bus. My right. brother raised his two daughters by himself. So there's a lot of wonderful dads out there, wonderful men out there. Yes. Don't misunderstand me. There are. But because men don't like conflict, back to what you said before, if he's afraid he's going to lose his wife because of his children, some men will drop their children. And this is where you get big daddy wounds because hmm. the child knows before he married Susie, we had a dad. And once he married Susie, he's so afraid of her. He's so afraid of losing her. He's so afraid of not doing things the way she's telling him to do it, that he dumped us to keep her. And see, that's not godly. He's yeah. got to learn a better way. And there is a better way. There is a better way, but it's hard. It's hard because he's got to learn how to set boundaries on both sides. Okay. Enter the, you have a word for this. You, you coined a beautiful phrase, the X wife-in-law the ex-wife-in-law <laughs> tell me about that phrase see people think when you get divorced that that person is now gone if you have children that person is in your life until the day you die or they die or the children die this does not end when you have children that person is in your life and is dictating portions of your life mm. forever. Yeah. And it's not just till the kids turn 18 and visitation stops. Because then weddings and weddings, all of that. Graduations, grandchildren. And babies. Oh, yeah. 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 So very often, dad was co parenting with the ex wife in law one way before he got married and then when he got remarried he started shifting how he wanted to co-parent and so now you've got the ex-wife in law and with the reason we call her that is because she is a part of your family whether you want her to be or not and if you want to keep throwing gasoline on the fire of the ex-wife in law you can do that, but you're creating drama for your own home. Do you know this, this is such a brilliant term because it removes the conversation. It's not the kids' mom. It like removes the mom part and it's we're dealing with wives. And if we can deal with wives appropriately then the dealing with the kids is easier. Yes. This is a mind game here, renaming yes. them. Because what do you, I mean, what do you call it? You call it the kids' mom. Yeah. Isn't that what they, isn't that the normal yeah, phrase? Yeah, the biological mom, the kids' mom. Um, yeah, the kids' is mom, their mom. It, and right. then it's like, you're mad at their mom. And they think that's my mom. And I don't, that only separates you all the more and causes Absolutely. more strife for the kids. Oh my gosh. But if, if, it, if you can keep in your mind, like you said, re-identifying the roles that this is his ex-wife and we're talking wife stuff. And then that can filter and think the parameters can be set then so that then it makes it easier to do what you need to do in parenting. And who do you think has a harder time getting along? Ex-wife and new wife or ex-husband and new husband? Ooh. Oh, I think it's the men. No. You do? No, no, no. I oh. think it's the moms. I think it's the moms because women are emotional. They're nurturers. They're life givers. They, they want, they, they are the creators of home. 
for sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. totally. Because let me tell you, in my 25 years, I've never had uh, a, one of the dads say to me or stepdad say to me, do you know that when their father, the biological father came to pick them up, he had shorts on that were way too short. Look at how his rear end is hanging out. So yep. you don't ever hear men talk about each other that way. <laughs> But I've lost count of the number of stepmoms that say, you should see the way she shows up at our house to pick up those kids. Her boobs are hanging out, her butt is hanging out. I think she's trying to entice my husband back into a relationship. Yeah. See, women are much more jealous and- and yeah, all, the, all the emotions, stepmoms. all yes. the emotions. It's just that this is the woman <laughs> my husband used to be in bed with. Yeah. Ooh. Can we get real for a minute? Let's be real. I can't. This is and she keeps showing up at the house. Exactly. Or yeah. she's got a kid that looks just like her. Why do we tell women, stepmoms, you should love these children exactly the same way you do your own? When this is a child that was created while my husband was intimate with another woman, Amen. and that child now looks exactly like their mother, behaves like their mother, talks like their mother, their mannerisms are like their mother, this is the woman my husband used to love. And inside of me, there's a little fear Maybe I'm not as good as, as pretty as, as good in bed, as smart, as, you know, this, that, or the other. And so I'm trying to stuff all of that down because I know how insecure and ridiculous that sounds and immature and jealous and stupid. So I'm keeping all of that down inside as a woman. And then she shows up at my door and I'm supposed to be excited and loving and all zippity doo dah about this child. Do you see how much Jesus it takes to overcome that? Oh, it's got to be. I, I mean, you got, I don't know how you do that without without Jesus. And so, even, even when I think about just a girlfriend, it wasn't even a girlfriend. It was like somebody his mother thought was would have been a better girlfriend for Warren than me. I, I mean, everything on the back of my hair goes up. Exactly. Is that normal or is that just our insecurity? It's totally normal. Because we're bonded. Exactly. This is my husband. Yeah. And see, I want all the firsts to be oh. with my husband. And he had all these firsts with another woman. Oh, wow. The first honeymoon the first vacation, the first baby come being in the delivery room and the first baby coming in. Even if I choose to add a baby to our step family, if I have a baby, my husband and I, this is not his first, whether it's my first or not, it, you know, it's not. But if I'm so excited as a new mom, like, oh, I'm my first baby, my first pregnancy. If he says anything like, Oh yeah, that was normal with my my first child. You know, when Tommy was born, that was exactly how it went. She's through the roof crazy. I don't want to hear about how it was with your first baby. Yeah. And see, she wants all those firsts. And it doesn't mm -hmm. have to be a child, but the child is usually the biggest if they have a baby together. Yeah. And you see, we try to pretend, especially in the church, that this competition between the former and the current shouldn't be there, that we should be the adult. We should be able to overcome that and not have those emotions. Oh. Well, yes, eventually you do. I eventually got there, but it took time. Like how long, know. how long did it take? Oh, a long time. I mean, and just when I would think I had it crushed, <laughs> you know, she would say or do something or tell a lie about me or tell the kids something about me that wasn't true or make fun of me about something that I was wearing or doing. And, you know, I started praying for her. That's the best piece of advice I can give these stepmoms that are listening right now. 
it's very hard to hate someone you're praying for. So I started praying for her. God taught me that, you know, and the more I would pray for her, the more I would see her as Jesus sees her, not how I was seeing her. And, um, but there still would be times, you know, when she would say and do hurtful things that I just wanted to slap her in the face. You know, I mean, I didn't, but I wanted to. And that translated down into her children. It's you I have to put up with every week. And if it weren't for you, I wouldn't have to deal with your mother. With her. Whoa. And so, again, you got to take that thought captive. In Scripture, in Second uh, Corinthians, where it says, take those thoughts captive, this is a classic example of that. When my mind would start to go there, I would have to go, Laura, 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 take that thought captive. I mean, inside my head, this is what I'm saying to myself. Holy Spirit, take that thought captive. That is not healthy. It's not godly. It's not loving. I'm doing this for you first, for my husband second. Well, not because any of those people deserve it. I'm doing this for you first, holy God, because you rescued me, you saved me, I'm holy now. And before my husband, whom I love. Take that thought captive. Don't let me reside there. Don't let it stay in my brain. Transform it into something that's true. I can be a smart stepmom. I can be a good influence. I can be a holy example. I can think differently. I don't have to reside here. Doesn't matter if I'm rejected by her or anybody else. I am loved by you. Whoa. And those were my mantras over and over and over again. And it got easier. The more I did it, the easier it got. So how do, how, how do, let's bring stepmom in now. I mean, uh, uh, ex, ex-wife-in-law. Let's bring, bring her into the picture. She's terribly wounded. Even if it was her idea. Even if she's remarried. Because it's her kids. And it really is about the kids. Because she probably really doesn't love the husband anymore. That's right. So that's probably helpful to the stepmom if she can remember that. They got divorced yeah. for a reason. Yep. And he's married to me for another reason. And that's exactly. a good one. Uh -huh. And, but it's her kids. Yep. So what is her, what is her, uh, ex step? No, ex wife in law. I love this. <laughs> well, it's so, it's so good. I mean, it's so helpful. Yep. Um, what, She's what is her wounding too. and, and her whole, her whole, what is going to help her? Because you can be on both sides of this fence. Absolutely. Yeah. And what it, what helps her to do it's it? It's wise. Well? If everybody can look at everybody else's wounds, if everybody could put themselves in each other's place, mm -hmm. if you can lay down the hate for five minutes and, and mm -hmm. see it through that lens, you know, there's a reason that the phrase mama bear is so known by everybody. Mm -hmm. You know, I love watching those shows where people survive all these different things. And, you know, those survival shows, very often people are attacked by a bear. And it's so interesting to me when I watch them because almost every single time they will show that the bear attacked because not too far off are some cubs. And so that mama bear, and she is like fury. I mean, if you've ever listened to anybody that's been attacked by a bear, they will tell you it is ferocious. I mean, they pick them right up by the back of their neck and swing them around to kill them. And so that phrase, mama bear, is a real thing. And it comes from a real place where any mother that's worth, their, worth anything will tell you, you touch my kid, I will kill you. And so it's so important to remember for as a stepmom, am I crossing the line? Because often I don't think I'm crossing the line. And even if I'm not crossing the line, if she thinks I'm crossing the line, I need to step back. Because these are not my kids. So we'll use the soccer game again as an example, because this is a big one. This is a huge thing between step families. Here, I whether hear it all the time. It is, it is like the big thing. I know. You're both and there. 
and it's a the game. Prom, <laughs> it's the like, prom pictures, the the graduation pictures, the you know all of it. Should the step parent be there? Well, of course, the step parent thinks I have a right. I've helped to raise this kid, or maybe they've been a full time step parent and they've raised the child. That's not uncommon either today. And so I should be there. I should be able to be there. And the question is, does the kid want you there? If the kid doesn't want you there, don't go. So ask the kid. I'd yes. really like to be there again, like you said. I'd really like to be there. But if it makes you uncomfortable, I I'm I'm perfectly okay. Because yep. it, it really it really is about them having the pain because they can actually see the sideline. <laughs> they can see what's going on. Yes. And especially if, if it I, hasn't gotten to a place where it's healthy. Now if it gets to a right. place where it's healthy, then they can look at it and go, We we get along really well. I have exactly. I have one girl that she said my my parents, you know, she's an adult. She said, my parents, they buy presents for each other at Christmas. Yes. Like they have figured it out. Hallelujah. There's somebody that's willing to do that. See, we say we love our stepkids, but if we really love our stepkids. We wouldn't make we them will, hurt. We will do whatever is the path of least resistance for them. Yeah. We will offer them and see, I, fortunately, I learned this before my stepsons got married. And because I'm a child of divorce and every major event in my life, my graduations, my wedding, both weddings, um, and every major event was ruined because of my step family dynamic. Oh. I, was, I was a ball of stressful mess because of it. And I was bound and determined. I am not doing that to my stepkids. Yeah. I am not doing, this is the greatest gift I can give them. And they they may never know it, but I went to both of them when they were engaged and said, I don't, I'll sit in the back row in the back pew if you want me to, or I don't even need to be there. I will, if you want me to participate and do something for you and help you with something, I'm there. But if it's easier for you, for me not to be involved. Now, the whole time my husband is going, you're not doing that. You're going to be there. I want you with me. I want you beside me. I, and I said, I don't care what you want. I care what your son wants. And so. Um, yeah, that was, no. that was really hard because I just was at a wedding recently. And the, the, the mom and the stepdad walked down the aisle in the procession. And the stepdad, the re the biological dad, was walking behind them. And I just thought, this is the most dishonoring thing I have ever seen. Like, could she have not done both of them? Could she have not gone by herself? And, I mean, you know, and, and just been separate from the dad going down with maybe his daughter or something else, his granddaughter? Like, was there no other way? than to say, this is the man I'm married to now and you're in the back? Yep. I I really, I can still remember seeing it and thinking, Some, somebody, this is so mean. Somebody uh, <clears throat> in those three people, um, either the mother, the stepdad, or the bride felt pressured to do that or put pressure to do that. It may be the bride that she no, felt like. No, it was like the mom. <laughs> okay. I know it was the mom. <laughs> yeah, it was the mom. It was almost common. like she wanted to, it was all, she was still trying to hurt him. Yes. And it was her exactly. kid's wedding. Exactly. And do you know how often that happens? I mean, think about that bride. Think about that <laughs> daughter. How guilty she must have felt doing that to appease her mother occasionally a stepdad will get upset with, you know, well, I raised you, your father was totally out of the picture, I deserve. But the right thing to do in that scenario, well, who am I to say, but would have been to have the dad and the stepdad side by side next to her. Yeah, I, but you see, the mother wouldn't allow it, it sounds like what you're saying. Yeah. And so who's really loving the child? <clears throat> And so, so back to, you know, so I told my stepsons and on the way to the wedding, I said to my husband, you are going to be in a picture with your ex-wife. 
just your ex-wife, you and your sons, you know, no, no, you've got to be in the picture. I said, no. And I'm not normally this bossy with my husband, but I was adamant that day. I said, you are going to give your son the gift of having one picture with his mother and his father. Because you know what, Mona? The only picture I have with my mother and my father is my first wedding when we were in the green room. And I had told the photographer, do not put my mother and father in pictures together. Don't try to do all these smoochy, smoochy mother and father pictures. Well, he forgot. And he got one photo with my mother on one side and my father on the other side. And that is the only picture I have in my entire life of me with my parents. And I treasure that photo. You see, I wanted his sons to have that. I wanted my pain as a child of a <laughs> divorce to serve a higher purpose. Now, each one of his sons, one asked me to read a scripture, the other one asked me to sing. So they both asked me to be a part of it. But I offered to sit in the back row and be totally unknown if it would make their day easier. Yeah. That's when you love your stepkids. Yeah, yeah, wow. Laura, this is this is such a such a great great podcast. I'm so grateful you have been here with me today. Amazing! What a wealth of information. We could talk for another two hours. Yes, it's complex. I mean, there's, and and I don't want any step family to step away thinking, oh, it's doomsday. And oh I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, no. You've got it heard? in the book. It's in the book. It's in the book. It's in yes. the book, and then all the other resources. Yes. And you're available to um, coach or counsel or do anything like that. I know you are. Right. Yes. I do life coaching in particular for step couples. Sometimes it's step moms, but usually we can't move forward too much with the step mom unless the dad is willing to hear some tips too. So, <laughs> well, again, I think you've made that really super clear that this yeah. is this, that he is the one that will, it would be best if he was taking the lead. Yes. And if he, he can get, if he can get to an event, if you can, if she can get him to come to a step family event, very often that's what seals the deal. Yeah. Because he can see my face, he can see my sincerity, he can see my body language, where I'm not throwing him under the bus. As a matter of fact, my heart aches for him because he's so caught in the middle. He is in the triangle. <laughs> but he's got to change what he's doing or yeah. it's not going to succeed. So tell us how they can get a hold of you and find these step family um, uh, conferences and such. Yes. Well, my website is The Smart Stepmom, thesmartstepmom.com. I'm also on Instagram. I'm trying to do more and more on Instagram. I'm not that techie, but I'm, I'm trying to do more and more. Um, I do a Tuesday morning stepmom tip on Instagram. So every Tuesday is a new tip. But and that's Smart Stepmom. So pretty much if you Google smart stepmom, you're going to get videos, TV shows, podcasts, everything related to me. But that's my website and I'm more than happy to connect. Thank you. Thank you so, so much. I'm so grateful that you were that you were here with um, me today. Just thank so you, grateful. Mona. Thank you for having a heart for step families because oh. not everybody does. A lot of churches turn me away because they don't want to talk about step families because then you have to talk about divorce. And yeah. see, they they assume that by talking about step families, you're endorsing divorce and nothing could be further from the truth. I hate divorce. Yeah. You know, divorce almost ruined my life twice. First yeah. as a kid, second as an adult. So so thank you for loving on step families because they need they need to be heard. They need to know there's help. And, um, and I'm happy to provide it as long as God gives me breath. <laughs> Thanks a lot, Laura. We'll talk to you later. Okay. God bless you. Hey, little mama, this has been an awesome, awesome, um, show. And I hope that if you are a stepmom or you're wrapped up in this whole, um, second marriage and do we have kids and you've got questions. I hope that you will, 
um, go ahead and comment, send emails to me. If you, if you can't remember Laura's information, I will have all of her information in the show notes for you to get a hold of. Sweetheart, there's sorrow and there's loss, but there is victory on the other side of it. And I want you to know that moms like us, we learn things like this. Moms, stepmoms like us, we learn things like this and you can do it. All right. I will see you next time on the Moms Like Us Do Things Like This. I got my little thing here. (laughs) Bye for now. Hi, I hope you liked this episode of the Moms Like Us show. And if you did, I hope that you'll share it. You'll share it with another mom friend. Because you know, moms like us do things like this. I also hope that you will check out the Moms Like Us Academy, where we take ideas like we've been talking about on the show, but we go deeper. We just don't get inspired and think, ooh, that's a really good idea. I think I want to try that. We actually learn how to do these things and why we need to. And then you know what? You have Mona, the mom mentor, and other master moms that teach the master classes in there. They come alongside and we do, we don't leave you alone. We help you implement and really, truly change your mom life into the mom life you've always wanted to have because motherhood isn't a natural talent. It's a skill, sweetie, and you can learn it. So go and check out the Moms Like Us Academy today and find me when you get there and say hi. Bye.